Then they shall <coughs> take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house where they eat. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled, at all with a bowl at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head and its legs and its entrails. You shall not let none of them remain until morning. And, that re and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat, of, eat it with a belt, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Verse 12. For I shall pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. <coughs> so this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it as a feast by an, by an everlasting order. So the Old Testament says you should keep this everlasting. Now, there's a question like, well, you know, I'm not a Jew. I don't want to do that. First of all, Jesus yeah, but I don't know if it's in USB right now because it should be like much better. And for 33 years, he celebrated Passover. Really? What we're going to do today would be well, we're going to celebrate the Passover like that we know that right. Jesus celebrated. Right. Oh, I know, maybe it is like yeah. in USB. Okay. <coughs> and someone said, oh, I know about the Passover. This is your job. job. This is my job. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, this is Paul writing to the Corinthian Christians. Story is not in Israel. Corinth is an isthmus in Greece. It's far over to the west side, meaning there's a lot of Gentiles here. And this is what he said in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 8. He says, let us keep the feast, which is the Passover, with the with, with leaven that is not of money. So we, we can see in here, even the apostles were celebrating it. Now what I want to do today is that we will assume as though we are with Jesus in the last Passover. Remember, Jesus was a Jew. He celebrated it the way the Jews did it. And what we're going to do today, we'll be having a, a, a Passover Seder. The Seder meaning is a Seder means order. There'll be a few things that will not be there in that place, and I want us to pack the place now, please. Uh, if you're a husband and a wife, please just have one place. If you're hungry, <laughs> and I will warn you now, those who have allergies to nuts, the dip will have enough, so don't try to dip anything there. If you're allergic to vegetables, this is a horseradish. If allergic to juice, it's diet. No, it's not diet. Okay, let's go pass this around. So a husband and wife, you have, uh, you have that. And then please hold it up, don't try to stay in your food. And uh, as we go around doing this, I'm going to ask pastor and the wife to please sit over there. Special today. Yeah. Praise God. Here we go. Can I have some more people to pass around? Where Can you help them pass it? No, I can help them pass it. There's more under the, uh, under the table. <coughs> and I would like to have one for myself, too. Thank you. Can you stay with your parents, please? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Passover is done, in, supposed to be done in every Jewish family. It's not, it's not really done in a synagogue. It's, it's in a home. The father officiates and the kids participate. That's why we're keeping the kids here today. And you will see how powerful it is. All right? Everybody has it? The, uh, the kids should have some. The white one, just being aware, that's very hot. Okay? That's very hot. Just, uh, just uh, be sparing in your eating that. So, if you want to eat it, you need a waiter. We have more of this. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Amen.
On the 14th day of the month of this sun, as every house has prepared, what they would do in the morning, actually the previous to that, the kids will go around the house. This is where we get the term spring cleaning because they look they clean the house. But this time they're looking for yeast. They're looking to clean the house from any yeast that is in there because the yeast is a symbol of sin. And then on the Passover, the day of the Passover, while they're on their houses, probably sitting like this, looking beautiful, they're waiting for a sound from the temple. There will be a trumpet blast. There will be a trumpet blast, and I want, uh, can we close the door because that is part also of our celebration. Uh, there will be a trumpet, bl trumpet blast, and they will hear the trumpet. And when the trumpet sounds, that tells them, now the Passover begins. And so as they begin the Passover, there will be, they will start drinking the cup. If you would notice, I have actually, well there are seven cups here. I want you to focus on the three cups. There will be, I mean, on the four cups, not the three cups. There will be four cups that they will be drinking. The first cup that they will be drinking will be the cup of sanctification. The four cups actually are the cups of the sanctification, the cup of deliverance, the cup of betrothal or redemption, and then the cup of restoration. Passover is not like what we do when we do communion that is done in five minutes. It's actually a feast. They actually roast a lamb and they sit down and it's a, it's a wonderful kumbaya. <laughs> I don't know, it's long, but we're not going to do the long thing. And so when the trumpet sounds, they pick up the first cup. Now I, want, I know you don't have four cups, but what I want you to do is, the first, the first time we're going to pick the whole thing. I want you to divide that cup into four as you drink it, okay? So uh, we, you guys will sip one and then leave uh, three quarters because we will drink that, we will drink that four times. Myself, I'll be drinking. That's a lot. <laughs> I'll be running to the bathroom. I'll be drinking that. Okay. So the first cup will be the the cup of sanctification. The Bible says in Exodus chapter six, verse six to seven. Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being enslaved to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people. I will be your God, that you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land, out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And so the cup, the first cup is the cup of holiness. Everybody grab your cup of holiness. You guys pay attention, eh? Now for authenticity. How do you do it? There is a prayer here, but since I am not a Jew, I don't have to do that. But this is how they do it. They wrap this and go ahead. Alright, so you have your cups? Alright, well, let's do this. I'm going to do the prayer cups, and they always over their heads when they pray. Alright, this is the cup of sanctification. Blessed is the Lord our God, the King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Let's partake of the fruit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for separating us for Jesus by your will. Hallelujah. As we partake of the fruit of life. Now, I want you now to look at your plate. You will see in your plate. Here's my plate. And there's another cup. On your plate, you would notice there's a green leaf in there. And there is the uh, mapsa, which is the wafer. And there is this uh, blob of something. That would be, uh, uh, I will tell you what that is. And of course, there's a napkin. And there should be, there should be, when you go to a Jewish party over, you have to see an egg in there, a roasted egg. We're not adding that because the concept of the roasted egg was when the temple was destroyed, since they cannot anymore offer a lamb sacrifice, they decided to roast an egg. But we're looking for how Jesus celebrated it. So Jesus does not have a roasted egg in there. It only happened after AD 70 when there was no more temple. So being, you know, as close as well, the truth we could be, we don't have the roasted egg. Although there's something missing there, the roasted lamb. Good, yeah. 
So number one you'll see there will be this wonderful thing. It's not an uh, ornament, it's called a karpas. The karpas is symbolic of a new life. It's green. It means spring. It is also the growth and fertility of Israel in Egypt. Remember, although Israel was <coughs> as slave in Egypt, <coughs> they actually multiplied. Remember? Now the Lord the, the, the Pharaoh said any male born among the Egyptian women kill them. But the uh, uh, but the, uh, the people who were uh, coming in part, what do you call them? The midwives actually saved them. And they were saying the Egyptian women are so, so strong that they keep them before we get in there. And so the Lord has blessed them, although they were under, under, under this uh, heavy, heavy slavery. So that's the symbol of Karpas. It's symbolic also of the hyssop. Remember, God said, dip the hyssop into the blood and paint one. The door frames and the lintel of the house. And that's what the symbol of Karpas also. Next will be the Maror, which is that uh, yellow glove, I mean the uh, white glove or something over there. Don't stick your finger there yet, or never. It is symbolic, it is, Maror came from the word Mara. Remember when they were traveling away from the Egyptians, they brought the, the, the Red Sea? Yeah. And then they came to a place of Mara, it means bitterness. So when they got there, it is a symbol of the oppression of Egypt what Egypt did to the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 14, this is what the Bible says. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. So we can see here the plague actually is a story. Past, present, and the future. We will see that later. So we see that uh, partly as their life, although they were being persecuted, they were multiplying. And then the the the, uh, the maror is a picture of what kind of life they have. It's bitter. It's a very bitter life being a slave. Now, the carosse, which you don't have with you, is this. Now this, you can dip your, your thing as much as you want. It's actually a symbol of a, of the mortar. You know, if you put bricks together, you need to put something in between to hold them together. So instead of putting a, a clay, I mean a, a real cement mortar here, the Jews in their in their uh, celebration, this is what Jesus also had. They would have honey and uh, uh, and, and uh, apples shredded, and then some nuts. And it's a symbol of this carosse is a symbol of the mortar that they used to put together the bricks. And I will show you the meaning of that later. And then there will be the salt water right here. This is symbolic of the tears of the, the Israelites shed while they were in captivity. So it's, there's a story in there. And uh, as we continue, so we have the first part. We have the bone shack, meaning a bone with no more meat is left in there. It's The name is Zeroah. It means a bone, but actually the meaning of Zeroah is the hand of God, the arm of God. It's not there, and that's what is there. And then we have the matzah. If you would look at it, it is, uh, this is the real one. This is, by the way, really kosher. It came from Israel. So you're not having it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think some of those, some of you guys have it. It is actually made without yeast. It is pierced. And it is burnt. Remember, Jesus was pierced. And the Bible said, you have do not burn and you do not boil the sacrifice. You will not eat it raw. So that it's not raw, what do you do? Burn it. And whatever is left, what do you do? Burn it. So this is a picture of Jesus, the uh, matzah. Now we will continue just to, just to enumerate the whole thing. We have the first, the fruit of the vine, there are four of them. The first one we already did, the second one will be the cup of uh, judgment. The third one will be redemption or getting there to the Lord. The fourth one is the cup of Elijah. And uh, we will see what it is later. Now, I'm going to ask my son to come over, Eli. This is what happens in a, in a, in a battle. Is this alive? All right. In a, in, a, in a Passover Seder, the youngest in the family, usually a boy, will 
have four questions to ask. And this is why uh, the, the Jews have...